All right, this one now is looking to solve. So if we can get common denominators for all three terms, then we can ignore all the denominators. All right, so let's start with this first term, the denominator on this one, uh, 2x squared minus x minus 6. So I've got to find uh, two factors of negative 12 that will add up to this negative 1. And it looks like it's going to be 3 and 4, specifically positive 3 and negative 4. So this splits up into 2x squared plus 3x minus 4x minus 6. And from here, we can factor out from these two terms an x, leaving us with 2x plus 3. And from these two terms, we can factor out a negative 2, leaving us with 2x plus 3. So the denominator there factors out into x minus 2 times 2x plus 3. That's our first denominator. And we're going to subtract this from 1 over 3x. And that should equal, should I give myself more space, that will equal 2 over, I can factor out from this term, uh, from these two, I can factor out an x, leaving me with x minus 2. So that's our denominator there. Alright, now let's just go through each of the denominators and see what's missing. So in this first term, we already have an x minus 2, which is in common with this denominator. But we have this 2x plus 3, that's fine. What it doesn't have is a 3x, okay? These two terms have an x in common. They don't have a 3 in common, though. So from this first term, we need more space. We're going to need a 3x there, meaning that I need to multiply the numerator by 3x as well. Um, now this other term here, this 3x, what about that x? You yeah, let's look at this second term first. And the second term is missing an x minus 2, and also a 2x plus 3. Sorry, I have to put that beneath, I just ran out of space there. Which means I need to multiply the 1 by x minus 2, and 2x plus 3. The reason I covered that up is because 1 times anything is itself. All right, now we've got this third term. It's missing a 3, right? So I'm going to have to multiply the 2 by 3. See, this, this term here had a 3, and this one had a 3. This one didn't. This term has an x. This term has an x. This term has an x. This, this term has an x minus 2. This one has an x minus 2. This one has an x minus 2, meaning those are already in common. There's no need to multiply those. Here we've got a 2x plus 3. Here's a 2x plus 3. But this last term does not have a multiplied by a 2x plus 3 in the denominator. So I'm going to have to multiply it in the numerator as well. 2x plus 3. All right, I'm going to attempt to rewrite this with the denominators and make it look a little bit more pretty. All right, by popular demand, I'm not rewriting the denominators. All I'm going to do is rewrite the numerators. And this right here, this 3x times x, is just going to end up being a 3x squared. And then this is minus. So I need to remember to put this in parentheses. If I distributed or used the FOIL technique on this, I would have a 2x squared minus x minus 6. And then this should equal, here I've got 3 times 2 is 6. And then I can distribute the 6 into the parentheses. So that would give me 12x plus 18. All right, so, yeah, I'm going to go back. Now I'm going to treat this as a negative 1, which I'm going to distribute into the parentheses. So I've still got 3x squared. But now I would have a minus 2x squared plus x plus 6 and this would equal if I distribute the 6 into this parentheses that gives me a 12x plus 18 now I need all the terms on the left side I'm gonna put them on the left anyways so that we have a positive leading coefficient 
Well, can you combine the... Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to do that as well. Let's combine these. 3x squared minus 2x squared is x squared. And from here, we've got, uh, well, we can subtract 12x from both sides. And that would give us negative 11x. And then we're going to subtract 18 from both sides as well. And that gives us a negative... Oh, it was minus 18. It gives us a negative 12 there. And this would equal 0 now. All right, now we're just looking to factor these out. That's great. We need two factors of negative 12 that will add up to negative 11. So I'm going to use negative 12 and 1, meaning that this would factor into x minus 12 and x plus 1. And that would equal 0. So all I need is for x minus 12 to equal 0, because if I multiply that by the x plus 1, then it would be 0. And if we solve this, we get x is 12. That's one answer. And then we also had x plus 1, and that should equal 0. And if we solved it, x would equal negative 1. That would be our other answer. Now we should check this in the denominators to make sure that it works. Uh, if 12 is uh, x, it's not going to change, or it's not going to be, it wouldn't give us a 0 for any of the denominators in the original equation. Well, what about negative 1? So x e equals negative 1 would work for all the denominators as well, and that's good.